so, so if if we have n correlated random variables, we can transform any n tuple of those variables into an equivalent uncorrelated standard normal n tuple by performing the following transformation. We first take each individual variable and transform it to its standard normal equivalent. So we standard, which is to say, we standardize the variable. And then we multiply the vector of standard normal variables with the inverse of our Kuleski matrix to account for correlation. And so we end up with an uncorrelated standard normal vector of variables. To illustrate that point in two dimensions, we start off with our two uh, normally distributed random variables that have some correlation between the two. We first standardize each one of them so, so that so we now have the x and the y axes uh, centered on zero and normalized such that they have uh, variance of uh, one. And then we account for this uh, skewing by um, removing correlation. So uh, we finally end up with uncorrelated standard normal variables where now our contours are circles. Okay, so a very important geometrical inter uh, interpretation of this product uh, UTU that is in the uh, distribution function is that what it simply is is the distance of any given point in standard normal space from the origin. So let's say we have a point over there that corresponds to a vector u and the distance or the size of that vector, let's call that d, is then simply equal to the square root of <coughs> this scalar product. Okay, so now more generally we're going to have the case uh, where our variables are not normally distributed, um, which is to say we want to describe a multivariate distribution uh, where the marginal distributions of each of the individual variables is not normal. So for example in this case we have x log normally distributed and y gumball distributed. Now in the case where they are uncorrelated we can still write our multivariate probability distribution function simply as the product of the marginal distributions. However, in the case where our uh, variables are correlated, we have a problem because um, the correlation coefficient is not invariant to the transformation. So basically, the co correlation between x and y is not the same as the correlation between the log of x and the log of y. And this is essentially the same effect that I showed earlier where I had these points that were all sitting exactly on a line but that line did not go through the centroid of the points. And in this case, even though, strictly speaking, the correlation coefficient between, between x and y should be 1 because there's a very distinct uh, deterministic relationship between x and y, the actual correlation coefficient that one would have calculated for those points came out lower. Now the same effect is going to show up here. Now I'm going to illustrate this by contrasting correlation coefficients for three different distributions here. So, so in each of these cases uh, the marginal distribution of x and the marginal distribution of y is identical. So in each case x is log normally distributed with the same parameters and y is gumball distributed with the same parameters. However as I note here the correlation coefficient is negative to, to varying magnitudes. Now you can see the effect of this just by looking at the contours where clearly there's no correlation present on the left here where there does seem to be a very clear indication that high y values are accompanied by low x values and high x values are accompanied by low y values in this right hand plot. Now using these distributions and the defined values of the correlation coefficients what one can do is to generate some number of randomly sampled x y points. So in this case I generated 10,000 points and for each of those sets of points I calculate their covariance and from that get the correlation coefficient. So in the case where uh, I specified that there is no correlation present my numerical result also gives no correlation. In the weakly correlated case my set of random points gives a correlation coefficient of negative 0.19 which is, which is again very close to negative 0.2. However, in the highly correlated case, the actual correlation coefficient calculated for, the, for this s set of points is notably lower than the value of negative 0.9 um, that I used to, to generate the points. 
Now what this illustrates is that the transformation methodology that I, that I developed in the previous slides can be confidently used for variables that are not normally distributed, provided that they don't have strong correlation between them and that the parameter distributions are not very strongly asymmetrical, which for the types of problems that we're going to be looking at is a reasonable assumption to make. Now, we, we mentioned that the probability can be determined in the one-dimensional case by evaluating the area under the probability distribution function, or in the case of the normal distribution, using pre-existing evaluations of the error function. Now, in general, in the multivariate case, we again have to apply numerical integration, but this is more challenging now as uh, we have uh, to perform the integration in multiple dimensions. However, there are two special cases that we can very easily exploit that I'm going to uh, explain here. One is a hypersphere which is centered on the origin. So in the two-dimensional two case a hypersphere is a circle. So what we're interested in on the left here is what is the probability of a point falling inside this red circle. The other case is an infinite half space bounded by some linear hyperplane. So again in two dimensions what that amounts to is the probability of a point falling on the one side of a straight line. Now the key observation that allows us to evaluate the first case is that um, the quantiles of a multivariate normal distribution are chi-square distributed. Um, so what this says is that if you have an n-dimensional problem, uh, the probability of a point falling within an n-dimensional hypersphere of radius d is given by the chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom evaluated for a chi-square variable with a value of d squared. So in the second case where we have the infinite half space, the key insight to make here is that uh, we're, we have circular symmetry here. So we can simply rotate this line such that it is parallel to one of our axes and then consider the marginal distribution um, along that axis to get the probability of a point falling on this side of the line. And that is nothing different than determining the univariate uh, probability of a normally distributed random variable. So one can simply look up a uh, standard normal variable with a value of 1.2 in a statistical table and find what the probability associated with this uh, higher dimensional problem is. Now I should add here that even though I did this in two dimensions here, this uh, transformation is general and you can do it in any number of dimensions. You can reduce any number of dimensions to a one-dimensional uh, normal problem once you are in standard normal space. 